Howdy, hacksters. Uh, thanks to recent circumstances, we have a very large and exciting box from Arduino. Actually, most of this is not the thing that I'm about to unbox, but I just want to appreciate that they sent along not only this new kit that we're about to look at, but also a lovely note and a cool tote bag. And a lanyard, I guess? Cool! Arduino swag is the best swag. I still have... Oh, I should have put on my hat. I have a pretty sweet Arduino hat that is covered in pins from all kinds of hardware friends. So thank you, Arduino team, for a very happy Monday morning. Uh, then we have the star of the show. Um, many of us are going to be stuck inside for a long time soon, whether if you're in the northern hemisphere and the chilly winds are bearing down of winter or uh, other <laughs> global phenomena. Uh, now is the perfect time for you to explore building your own home automation systems. And that's exactly what this kit is for, the Arduino Opla IoT kit. I have not yet opened this. I'm very excited to dig into it. Um, but as you can see on the front, we've got an OLED LED screen, OLED. Uh, we've got five capacitive touch sensors, five RGB LEDs, and a bunch of other cool stuff that we're going to take a look at. What else does it say on the packaging here? Ooh, my camera has decided to die. My secondary, it's no good. Um, but for now, we'll take a look at the outside. So it says, build custom IoT devices with full control over the processes and your data. Easily automate your home or workplace, set up, monitor, and control your connected devices with the Arduino IoT Cloud. Now, this Arduino IoT Cloud is something that uh, we haven't actually looked like at on the show yet, but we're going to be covering soon. It's an app that Arduino has released. Here we go. Uh, yes, I would like to show people what's on my desk, please. <laughs> there we are. OK, so it's uh, an app that Arduino has released to talk to your hardware. And so I have things set up here for like dashboards for this force sensing resistor reader. I've got a button LED control that you can push, and it'll talk to your Arduino devices. So this is now available for uh, both Android and iOS, which is very exciting. Let's get some more light on the subject. There we are. So. Um, what do we have here? This kit includes Arduino Maker IoT Carrier. You've got a color display, IMU, touch buttons, environmental sensors, battery charger, buzzer, and two relays. Maker Wi-Fi 1010 board, which is one that was released a while ago. So this whole thing is sort of a carrier board that the 1010 board sort of seats into. You've got plug and play cables for sensors, including Grove connectors. Uh, battery connection cable, motion sensor, plastic enclosure, uh, and a moisture sensor as well. Can't miss that. And a USB cable. Uh, one fun thing here is that it comes with eight different projects. And we've talked before about the vast variety of different projects out there, but there's also a few that sort of come up again and again. And I covered these actually back in 2016 for the 10 most common hardware hackathon projects. And there's a lot of overlap here, actually. And the reason that a lot of these projects are common is that they're sort of useful and fairly uh, easy to get started with. They're good projects for if you're trying out a new platform, like here, and they're good for um, people who are getting started in technology. Plus, you, there's a, in this article, there are various suggestions for how you could put a twist on them. Uh, but let's take a look at what have we got in the kit itself. Uh, it comes with uh, tutorials for remote controlled lights, personal weather station, home security alarm, solar system tracker, positioning of the planets and moons in the solar system. I'm very excited about that one. Inventory control, tracking goods in and out. Smart garden, monitoring and control the environment for your plants. Presumably that's going to have to do with this moisture sensor here. Uh, thermostat control, and thinking about you, a unique way to share messages between Opla users, which is super cute. Um, yeah, some of these are definitely overlaps. Some of them are ones that I haven't seen uh, done in many hackathons. Inventory control, for example, uh, could be good for groceries. Who knows? Uh, and actually, I want to. I'm going to show you some other things that this reminds me of as we get started here. So let's get this open. There's just some adhesive on the back here. All right. See if I can do it without damaging things. There we go. Oh, 
We're going to slide this open and take our first look. Assuming I can get it off. Hello. There we go. Ooh, shiny. And it appears that they've got a sort of uh, surface uh, cover. And then a lot of the more bits and bobs are hidden underneath. So they tell you to go to <laughs> opla.arduino.cc to find the step-by-step -step tutorials and all the instructions you need to set up your Arduino Opla. I'm assuming it's Opla because they've got an uh, accent on there. It includes a 12-month subscription to the Create Maker plan. So use the code below to activate your subscription. Fantastic. Um, this has to do with the uh, online programming environment. So. Uh, then find Arduino on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Share what you've done with your Opla IoT kit, Arduino Opla hashtag. Okay, let's take a look at this carrier board. Actually, let's take the whole thing out so I don't have to keep <laughs> covering this with my fingers. All right. How does this come out? Oh, yeah. So one of the most prominent things on here to start with is this 18650 clip. It's a large battery clip that uh, holds an 18650 lithium ion battery. And those are very common in things like these sort of uh, USB phone power banks. If you unscrew these, typically you'll find like a charging circuit with an 18650 battery inside of it. So that's one place to source those. If you have an old phone bank and maybe the outside has gotten a little degraded, you can also get rechargeable, uh, USB rechargeable ones from McMaster. So this one, uh, you just plug a micro USB uh, cable into it and it'll recharge. So that's pretty cool. Uh, many options for this, but of course you can also just leave it plugged in. And then you have a couple of 24 volt relays, which are very exciting. You can control, uh, you can switch higher powered sources from there, which means that you can turn lamps on and off, maybe outlets, things like that. Um, you've got A6, A5, uh, and this one isn't labeled what pin it is, but oh, well, that's just I squared C. Okay, cool. Um, so analog inputs and then an I squared C port. This is where you'd plug in your Grove modules. I have a few examples of those. You can connect, for example, an LCD uh, with an RGB backlight. You could connect a potentiometer. You could connect a servo motor if you wanted to make like a dial connected to your thingy. I actually have a couple other ones that are repeats of what's already included in here, including a temperature and humidity sensor and a motion detector and things like microphones and whatnot. So this is a very expandable kit beyond what already comes included, which includes things like a buzzer. And um, so these are the connections for your relays. And let's have a look at the front. Here are your capacitive touch buttons, your color OLED display. And here you've got, uh, this looks like humidity, light sensing. What is this one, temperature? We'll take a look. Make MKR IoT carrier board. Delightful. I'm assuming that these are your RGB LEDs around the edge here. So what else have we got inside of here? Oh, yeah, we have this enclosure. So the whole thing can kind of sit inside of here, including its battery. That's actually quite beefy. And what this reminds me of is actually a more uh, enclosed version of Particle's internet button that they released a number of years ago, which came with four buttons and a ring of 10 LEDs, but it didn't have its own built-in battery and uh, or any of these other built-in sensors. It was just an interface, but it seems like a spiritual sibling. I'm interested to know how it works with the touch sensors, um, given that you may be expected to have it in the enclosure. Look, you've got little wall mounts and stuff. Very cool. Okay, so what else have we got? We've got some little screws for attaching things together. We have a micro USB cable, a couple of, oh, an I squared C, C grove kind of thing. This actually is only three wires. Uh, and then you have this sort of analog connector here. USB 2.0 high speed cable for super fast syncing and charging. <laughs> You have a, a connector for a battery. It looks like you can actually connect a LiPo battery onto here as well. So if you wanted to 
or even like a, a battery pack for um, double A's or whatnot. whatnot. Oh, you also have an SD card, a micro SD card slot in here, which sounds really interesting when it comes to like data logging and things like that. Or if you wanted to log messages from your friends, since it seems like they have a framework for that. Uh, we have your soil moisture sensor, capacitive uh, moisture sensor. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> this is all structured, but it's kind of, I've kind of lost the structure in here. Um, the moisture sensor, motion sensor. So these guys, very clear. Aha, uh -huh, here's one of those connectors we would use. Cute. And this would be for, our, you know, smart plant watering systems uh, so that you could make sure that your plants stay happy, even if you make a uh, weekend getaway to do, go do some dispersed camping or whatever. Or if you're just like me and you're a little bit spacey sometimes, uh, your motion detector, you could use that to make the display light up, for example, and show you the time, show you the temperature, show you the humidity, show you any new messages or connect it with one of the other Grove modules to do some other function. Uh, and then we have the Maker Wi-Fi 1010 board, which is designed from the ground up for IoT. It has Wi-Fi connectivity. You've got that at 21 chip on there, which is very powerful. A 48 megahertz clock, 256 kilobytes of flash, 32 kilobytes of SRAM, and USB SPI I squared, squared, <laughs> squared C, I squared S, and UART interfaces, um, five volts input, 3.3 volts operating voltage, and you can read the rest for yourself. Uh, I'll put the link to this product page individually in the description. Right now I have one for the kit as a whole. We have a question where it says, can you give us a link for the touch sensors and rounded display board, this guy. So if you just go to the description of this video, you will find a link to the Arduino Opla IoT kit, which is this exact thing that we're looking at right now. And it will include this boy. I don't think that you can buy it on its own. This is actually similar to another kit that Arduino released previously, similar but not identical. So if you have one of these lying around from a previous iteration and you want to use it for uh, some stuff with this kit, be aware that it's not exactly the same. Such a nice rounded display board. Yeah, it's very aesthetically pleasing, isn't it? It actually reminds me a bit of the Nest for thermometer as well. Um, but I always really liked this internet button. You know, I've kept it for maybe five years now. Um, it's just a really cool, you know, you got buttons, you got lights, you can make a little specialized clock or whatever. And um, like this one, it has RGB lighting, which allows you to pack a lot of information into a very low, uh, a small space. So I'll be checking this out over the next few weeks and trying to build some of these example projects. As I said, they're very uh, popular ones that sort of stand the test of time. So I think they've made a really good choice with what exactly they chose to include. Let's take another look at the website so that you can actually see the details. Here is the Arduino Opla IoT kit page. It goes for $114, um, which may be a little much. You can always, of course, put together your own kit that does similar things if you want to go the DIY route. But this does have um, classic projects that have stood the test of time and are easy to modify. If you want to build something else, uh, these are really good jumping off ones. You get the code, you get the pieces, and then you can modify it to your heart's desire to create whatever you want that's more uh, compelling for your own application. You've got that built-in IoT Wi-Fi, and you have all the... Uh, community input and resources that people have generated for the Arduino platform over the years, which is really amazing. I don't think we missed anything on here, but if you have any questions, drop them now, and I'll take a look before we wrap up. Um, and then you can also check out our own article by Gareth Hafakri, who talks about uh, a little bit more in depth on what exactly is on this uh, carrier board. Very good. All right, so we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, any any last questions? I don't think so. Cool, yeah, check out the Arduino Opla IoT kit. Uh, very good for people who are staying inside during the winter months or whatever 
whatever is going on. If you're in the southern hemisphere, maybe it gets really hot and you can't go outside either. <laughs> we all have our own reasons to stay home and tinker with electronics. And this is a great platform for starting to do that. Whether you're a beginner or you want to get started with your kids or you just want to st have something that's a really nice all-in-one, like it comes with its own enclosure and a battery pack. Uh, very nice little kit from Arduino. So have a great rest of your week and we'll see you soon. Hack on.